Alright, here we go boys! <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's Liv. If you're new, welcome. We are doing, lo and behold, yet again, another week of workouts video. The support on the last one was insane, so if you haven't gone and watched that, go check that out, but you guys seem to love these videos. I enjoy making them because I feel like it just gives like a very raw, authentic view into my actual approach to fitness. I'm also realizing that this was the exact way the last one started. I was in this car wearing this shirt. I'm so, that's fantastic. But anywho, I wanted to give a quick little rundown of what my workout routine is now so that like you're kind of more caught up to speed for the rest of the week. A majority of my training is centered around weight training so I'm mainly lifting weights is what you're going to see mostly. However, I have been trying to kind of diversify my training a little bit especially because I'm definitely content with my muscle mass. I don't necessarily want to be building anymore. My current fitness goals if you will is just to maintain where I'm at so I definitely have more wiggle room to experience like experiment with my workouts and try different things which is kind of where I'm at. I also have a 10k step goal every single day so I try to hit 10,000 steps a day. I mainly go for a walk every day for like anywhere between 35 to 45 minutes a day depending on how active the rest of my day was. And then I train five days a week with two rest days. I'm really only lifting like heavy weights for four days out of the week and then my last day is like a functional full body circuit with light weights, more body weight work and it's like circuit style. So that's kind of more of my dash of cardio. My last week of workouts is when I was still had hit in my routine. I had one hit session in per week when I was in the heat of my cut but now since I'm not in a cut anymore or trying to lean out I don't do any more hits so that circuit training that one day a week I guess is kind of my cardio if you will because there's definitely cardio components to it and then also my step goal is a big part of like how I get my cardio in as well just increasing my movement and then I usually like to hike once a week like on the weekends for probably like a three or four or five mile hike but yeah that's pretty much the 411 I've been weight training for the past five years so I definitely have a good chunk of experience I'm also an ACE certified personal trainer. I became certified like two and a half years ago. I personally like not to be that person, but like I love my split. <laughs> I kind of recently came up with it, but I absolutely love it. And I don't know if I'm ever going to change it because it just is like, it hits everything perfectly. So I personally love it. And I know people that have been kind of taking on my split and absolutely love it too. So I'm stoked to show you guys the workouts this week. I'm going to stop blabbering and we're going to go in and we're going to kill it. I'm stoked to move. I'm so hyped right now. My stoke level is like through the roof. It's pretty much touching the stars and <laughs> I'm just so happy I don't know why I, I do know why but I just am like I'm thankful and I'm just so so for what's in store for us so let's go freaking move our bodies and be grateful to do so okay thank you peace and love Welcome to the first workout of the week. So as always, I always start off my leg days with some sort of mobility work, dynamic stretch, hip openers, that sort of thing, just to get ready to work. I usually always start off with these froggers is what I call them. It's basically a nice low deep squat and then I come back up to again be taking my body through a movement, through a range of motion. That's essentially what a dynamic stretch is. And I also push my knees out just a skosh to help open up those hips. Then I eventually come up all the way into a full extension and grab my toes in order to help stretch out my hamstrings as well. Then I love these. These are just some really low lateral lunges. Again, these are amazing for opening up just my groin and my hips. I really love these. I stay nice and low throughout the whole movement. Then here, I kind of came up with these, not gonna lie. It was like a low, nice, big, deep runner's lunge. And then I would come back and extend up so that my front leg got a little bit of a hamstring stretch as well. My intent with this was to help open up and stretch out my hip flexors a little bit and also get some hamstring stretch as well because again that is what our main focus is for today's workout then love these these are 90 90 hip rotations basically you're just going to drop your knees down to the ground by trying to keep your hips square and this really helps to open up my hips i love the way it feels then you do not have to do this step there's of course tons of different opinions with glute activation but i personally like doing glute activation before my leg days just to help warm up my glutes and make sure they're recruited before i 
start my workout just so that they fire more readily when I actually enter in my main lifts. I usually will just do one set a piece of probably like five to six movements, I would say for anywhere between like 15 to 20 reps a piece. So first I do one and one half squats, basically coming down, doing a squat and coming back up for half a rep and then coming back down. Then I did some good old kickbacks, of course, keeping my back nice, flat and neutral, trying not to have any arching in my lower back and really focusing on kicking out and driving with my heel. Then of course, some good old glute bridges. I like to go nice and slow to get a really good contraction and mind to muscle connection to help recruit my glutes. And then also a iso glute bridge hold with an abduction. So again, holding that glute bridge and pushing our knees outward to hit our glute medius and minimus. Finishing off with some donkey kicks on each leg as well, just to do more of a unilateral movement. Alrighty, now to start off, you guys are going to absolutely love this exercise if you haven't tried it yet. It is amazing. Basically, it's a one and one half stiff leg deadlift. Now, I, I have done one and one half reps like with hip thrusts and stuff, but I've never put it in with a stiff legged deadlift for whatever reason. It's phenomenal. I loved it. So I did four sets of 10. The full rep and half of a rep is one. So when it comes to form with your stiff legged deadlift, you want to think about initiating the move by pushing your hips backwards. This is a hip hinging movement. So again, focus on pushing your hips backwards as if you were trying to close a door with your bum. You want to also pretend like there is a board strapped to your back to prevent any arching or curving. This will help to prevent lower back pain. So really want to think about as the only joint involved in this should be your hips. So again, push your hips backwards. This will cause a nice big stretch in your hamstrings and in your glutes. It will shift your weight back onto your heels, which again will help with glute recruitment and hamstring engagement. And so once you push your hips backwards, you want to focus on pulling up through your heels, through your hamstrings and through your glutes to help pull you up out of that movement. Your arms and hands are only hooked for the weight. In terms of grip, this is going to come down to the individual. I like one supinated and one pronated, and they're usually about like on the inside of my legs, and you want to keep your neck in line with your spine. And as you can see from the side view, when I pick up the weight, I retract and roll my shoulder blades back and down just to help engage my back, help with posture, and just to help make sure that my shoulder blades aren't rolling in the whole time and then causing me to have poor, you know, back posture and causing back pain. So that's something that helps me to keep a nice flat back throughout the movement. If you experience lower back pain during these types of movements, that's most likely because you are not keeping your core tight or you are arching your lower back too much and creating an anterior pelvic tilt. So you wanna make sure that your core is nice and tight and you wanna scoop your tailbone and pelvis under a little bit to help create a posterior pelvic tilt, engage the glutes and shift the stress away from your lower back. You wanna keep that bar nice and tight to your legs. As you can see from the side view, I'm basically grazing the front of my shins. Ugh, it's such a good exercise, you guys. This is making me wanna go do it. Okay, then moving right along into hip thrust, of course. So I did three sets of 10 with a heavier weight, and then I did one set of 15 with a lighter weight. I also want you guys to keep in mind, I do warm up sets before I work up into this weight. So I did one set of about like eight to 10 with just one plate, another set with a second plate and then I went into my working set which is what you're seeing here. So in terms of hip thrust form, I shimmy my legs up, scrunch my knees in, I put my elbows onto the bench and I shimmy up onto the bench by pushing up through my elbows and my heels and sliding my back onto the bench. Bench height is also super important. You don't want your bench to be too high because you're going to struggle to feel it in your glutes. I think the sweet spot is finding a bench that makes like your torso parallel to the ground when you're in full extension at the top of the movement, if that makes sense, to help create that 90 degree angle in your knee. So with that being said, I like to place my feet so my knees are stacked above my ankle. The foot placement is everything when it comes to a hip thrust to make sure that you're feeling it in your glutes and not too much in your hamstrings or quads. So there should be about a 90 degree angle in your knee when you lock it at the top. We're constantly driving up through our knees. We're looking forward to help create the posterior pelvic tilt to help with glute engagement and help with that scooping motion that comes with the hip thrust. You really don't want to be using momentum from your torso and chest, and you rather want to be scooping up through your hips and contracting your glutes to push that weight up. In terms of back placement to make sure you're not sliding off the bench, you want it to be so about like your shoulder blades are on the bench or like the bottom of your sports bra should be on the bench, somewhere in there to make sure that you don't slide off. If you're still having problems, put like either a weight behind the bench or put the bench up against the wall, and this will help you to prevent the bench from sliding 
coming out from underneath you. And then here I am with my lighter weight and I like to do some reps with lighter weight just because I find I get better engagement. I like to push my strength with my glutes, but it's also really important to me to make sure that I'm getting a really thorough, high quality contraction in my glutes with mind to muscle connection. So I find that adding in some lighter weight sets really helps with that and just to help like finish off my glutes. Then moving into glute cable pull throughs. These are also another phenomenal exercise. I did these for three sets of 12. These may seem a little bit uncomfortable when you're doing them in the gym, but just do it for the booty gains, dude. I'm telling you it's worth it. So you're going to take that cable. I use the rope attachment. You can also just use a handle. You're going to straddle it, walk forward. This is also another hip hinging movement. So it's going to mimic the same cues that we talked about with the stiff leg deadlift. You want to start by pushing your hips backwards, pretending there's a board strapped to your back to prevent any arching or rounding. By pushing our hips backwards, like we're closing a door, this is going to shift our weight onto our heels to help us then pull up through our heels through our hamstrings, through our glutes, and get a nice big contraction at the top. Moving right along, we are almost done. So this is a single leg good morning. I only did two sets of 12 here. So basically, it's going to be a similar movement pattern yet again. This is another hip hinging movement. We're going to initiate by pushing our hips backward, pretending there's a board on our back, shifting the weight onto our heels, and really driving up through our heel. As you can see, since we're doing a single leg, I kind of am doing a B stance foot position, meaning that non-working leg my right leg is kind of kicked back behind me and propped up on my toe. This is just gonna help to isolate one side as opposed to the other. And I'm kind of doing more of a constant tension movement pattern here. So I'm not super squeezing and locking out at the top. I'm kind of stopping just shy of my peak contraction to help keep constant tension throughout the whole movement. And then we finished off with a glute med kickback for three sets of 12. This is going to hit our glute medius and basically help to round out out the glutes and work our glutes in more of that lateral plane of motion. Super, super similar to a normal kickback. However, here we're going to be kicking out sideways at about like a 45 degree angle. So in terms of kickback form, my back is nice and flat and neutral. My lower back doesn't curve when I kick my leg out. It's keeping nice and tight. My core is nice and tight. My neck is in line with my spine. I slightly bend over just to help concentrate and isolate my glute. I'm driving out with my heel like I'm kicking a can across the floor. Since this is a smaller muscle, this is one out of the two smaller glute muscles we have. It may be a little bit harder for you to feel. So I want you to put your hand at the top side portion of your glute and this you'll definitely be able to feel it working and it'll help you get a better mind to muscle connection. Okay, and we're back. Workout finished. I was just in there for so long. Don't really know why, but I was. Really good workout though. I genuinely really, really loved it. And I really hope you guys try that one because I don't I don't I don't know really why. I just loved it and I feel like it was very well rounded. But now it's already like 7:20 p.m. I still haven't walked today. Let's see what my steps are at. Okay, so we're looking at 6400 Not bad, not bad. So this means I am gonna go for a later night stroll tonight, but no worries. But so it's gonna be a nice like sunset stroll. Hello, it is now Tuesday. So like I said, Tuesdays are my upper body push day, meaning we're hitting chest, triceps, and shoulders. And I also like to do some like handstands on this day. And I this is kind of more of like a lighter day for me. I tend to do more body weight stuff. I don't know, I guess I've just been getting more like creative on my push days instead of doing like such conventional lifting. So it's kind of like a mix between body weight stuff and weights, if that makes sense. So I figured I would do an outfit check because I wanted to do this yesterday and I may or may not have planned all of my outfits out this week. 
because I just love good gym outfits. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just gonna let the cat out of the bag now. All of my outfits are pretty much from Outfleet. Everything I wore yesterday was from Outfleet, and this is from Outfleet as well. So this is their like little seamless crop top. And then these are their biker shorts. This is an older color, but it's so cute. It's in the color Jamesicle. And then these shoes are super old from Adidas and I literally got them for $25 at an outlet. Yeah. Okay, let's go do it. Okay, workout numero dos. So here's our first upper body session of the week. I like to do a little smidgen of some mobility work before just to help open up my shoulders because again, my shoulders are always wicked tight. That whole just area always just feels so stiff. So I like to take a pole and just kind of do some drills to help open up my shoulders as you're seeing here. I always like to start off with some push-ups as well. Of course, feel free to modify and go on your knees if need be. I will do one to two sets of like 15 to 20, I think here. I only did one set of 20 just to warm up the muscles, get some blood flow. So I personally like to do a lot of supersets on my upper body days, keeps things flowing, keeps my heart rate up and makes me not get so bored. First, I did a dumbbell flat bench press for four sets of 15. I honestly don't go crazy weight. I just don't really feel a need to. So in terms of form, I like to retract my shoulder blades back and down to help engage my lats in my back to then open up my chest cavity and just have a more stable foundation same thing goes with my foot place when I keep a nice wide grounded foot placement by digging my heels in this does wonders for me to help me then be able to control the weight by having a solid base when I come down I'm not dropping my elbows 90 degrees for my side it's more to 45 degree angle this is going to help you engage your front shoulder muscle as well as your chest I'm coming down till just about the weights are kind of in line with my chest and then I'm coming up and getting a nice squeeze in my chest and in my shoulders keeping my core tight as well, and really focusing on keeping a nice, fluid, stable range of motion with the weights. I then superseted that with seated front raises. I have not done these since mm, probably about 08. I'm kidding, but like it's been so long. So these, I did these for four sets of 20. Again, hitting that same frontal delt as well, keeping your core nice and tight throughout the whole movement. And as you can see, when I come up at the top of the movement, I'm rotating my palms downward and really isolating my shoulder for that contraction. Going nice and slow, we want to eliminate momentum here. We don't want to be swinging the weights. We want our shoulder muscles to be what's bringing that weight up in the air. Then for our next superset, we did a rear delt fly. I'm, if you guys are a regular on my channel, this is not new to you guys. I do these pretty often. So I did these for three sets of 15. I'm not driving my pinkies out perpendicular to me. It's more so about a 45 degree angle out from my side. So with that being said, I am driving through this movement with my pinkies. I find that helps me really contract my rear delts. I'm keeping a nice slight bend in my arm as well to help protect my elbow and not have any stress. I'm keeping a nice flat neutral back as well. Then I superseted that with a good old upright row for three sets of 20. Now I'm completely aware this is not a pushing motion. However, my upper body push days are more so for my chest, triceps, and shoulders like I said. So since this is shoulder movement, I still include it on this day. So with an upright row, I'm basically grazing that barbell up along the front of my body, really focusing on hitting my lateral delt and having that be what's pulling up this weight. What's something that really helps me is I try to keep my grip really light, honestly, and just to have my hands be a hook for the weight. And this helps me not really drive up with my hands, more so pull up with my actual shoulder muscle itself. Then I have just one isolated tricep exercise. So I used to do these all the time in college and I completely forgot about them. And then I rediscovered them like two weeks weeks ago and I love them again. So I just call this a suspended tricep push down. I did four sets of 15 here. Basically, as you can see, my elbows are kind of suspended out. I'm tilted over at a 45 degree angle. I'm not upright like a normal tricep push down. I pretend like there is a rod in running through my elbows to help keep them stationary and therefore isolate my tricep. Then for a little body weight burnout exercise, I did chameleons for three sets of 10. These are so challenging, but so freaking good because not only is it like putting your body through a range of motion, but it's also helping with body weight strength and just mobility. It's amazing. So basically you want to pretend like you're skimming the ground. Essentially, you want to stay as low as you possibly can without actually letting your knees or face or anything touch the ground. And so basically here, it's kind of hard to explain, but a lot of my weight is by me driving back through my palm. 
drums, if you will, and that kind of is what pushes me back. Then to finish off, I just worked on some handstands, and you guys, to be completely honest, I appreciate your guys' pointers so freaking much, but I just am still struggling so much. I'm like kind of making progress. I'm able to get off the wall for probably like 10 seconds maybe, but then I always find myself just falling down instead of like back towards the wall. I don't really know. We're still working on it. Work in progress, but it's gonna happen. Happy Wednesday. So, a few things I want to say. First of all, yesterday I had to go for another really late walk because I was editing literally all day long. So I had to walk after my workout and I did not hit my 10,000 step goal. I hit like 8,500 I believe and I just wanted to let you guys know that because not every single day is perfect for me. My goal is 10,000. Sometimes I totally surpass that and sometimes I don't hit it. But like I said, I'm in more of like a maintenance phase so I don't have any like strict crazy physique goals right now or anything like that or training goals so I definitely kind of have more grace with myself with and I'm not super strict with it and this morning I was able to read my book usually like in the morning because I take like just how you exercise in the gym you got to exercise your mind so I do that usually by like either reading affirmations practicing gratitude journaling meditation being more mindful and intentional with my thoughts all of that stuff that's kind of my like mindful practices to help strengthen my mind so today I did my affirmations out loud expressed my gratitude out loud and then read and I'm currently reading the power of now I absolutely love it I'm not super far along about like a hundred pages in but I love it and I feel like I'm going off right now I'm really turning this into a vlog I can't help it but freaking we got a package from Nutribullet and I'm hyped as freaking Fook it's their blender combo so like this looks fantastic and I'm really excited to try this but the real reason I started this clip in general was because I'm going for a walk and it's about 11 a.m. so we're gonna go for a nice like mid-morning stroll and it's gonna be great and it's gonna be refreshing this is the biggest tragedy of the century right now are you joking Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do. I physically can't go without my headphones. I'm gonna charge them. Okay, we're back in motion. And the blue skies today are truly impeccable. The skies here in Utah have been pretty smoky from just the fires. And we're getting some bright bluebird skies today and I'm stoked. There's so many butterflies. <laughs> okay, the next thing that I wanted to touch on is like the substance of my walk, if you will. Because there's definitely a difference between like walking hills, walking really fast, that sort of thing. Like that's where it kind of borderline turns into more of a workout as opposed to like just movement. Now, my intention with my walks is just for daily movement to increase my NEAT or my non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is again, like the calories or movement that you're doing throughout the day that isn't involved in an organized workout session. So the point of this is just movement. So mainly, usually I do walks that are very flat, decently mellow for the most part, but I'll walk like anywhere between like two and three miles, depending on how sedentary I am for the rest of the day. But so yeah, it's just something to keep in mind because I used to kind of have really intense walks plus intense workouts and it just was too much for my body and I can feel my hormones like having to compensate as a result. So now I'm much more mindful and I just do more mellow walks again, just to get movement in just to get my steps in, but not necessarily with high intensity at all. All right, welcome to our push day. So I always like to start off by foam rolling. As you can see, I kind of just chill i look pretty comfy but um foam rolling is amazing just to help you know facilitate blood flow and get in any knots that there may be my back is just always so tight i honestly just need to go get a deep tissue massage but if there's any like tender areas or knots that i feel i kind of will just chill on it for a second and try to help break up that tension in my back and then i also just like how i did yesterday i like to use the same rod as well and open up my shoulders because there's definitely a lot of back movements where our arms are up over our head so this just will help to open up my shoulder socket 
pocket as well. And then I really love jump rope ring. I don't know if you're new here, but it's like so underrated and a jump rope is like $5. So this gets my heart rate up so fast. It gets me warm really quickly, which I really like. And it's amazing for footwork and stuff. So I like to do this for about like 10 minutes, um, give or take before my workout to help me warm up and also to help with footwork. And then moving into the actual workout itself, I started off with the barbell T-bar row is what I personally called it. And I did it for four sets of 15. It's pretty much like a landmine variation, but just with a barbell. I love these. I personally didn't see these anywhere. I kind of just came up with it, but basically you want to position yourself so that when you're driving up that barbell, it's hitting like right your in between your chest, like your sternum essentially. Again, you want to keep your back nice and flat, no arching or curving. You want your neck in line with your spine to alleviate any stress. And I'm keeping a nice athletic stance. As you can see, my hips are back, my knees are bent, and this just helps me get a nice sturdy solid base to really focus on contracting my back muscles. Another big thing is you want to keep your elbows tight to your side here to really engage the back muscles that we are trying to target. This is mainly going to hit like your mid back. So that was more of a horizontal pull pull exercise. Now for our vertical pull exercise, I did some chin-ups and pull-ups and I completely forgot to film the chin-ups with this camera. I did it on my phone for my Instagram story, but I forgot to film it on here. So I did one set of chin-ups for 11 and then I did one set of pull-ups for six and one set of five after that. I've honestly been surprising myself with my pull-up strength. I did not think I was going to be able to do this many at all, but I guess my lat muscles have really been making some progress. But feel free to use the assisted pull-up machine if you need to. Something that helps me reset when I come back down is just to retract my shoulder blades back and down, kind of roll my shoulders back and drop them away from my ears. This helps me to engage my lats and my back muscles to then be able to pull up. Nextly, moving right along, I did a single arm rear delt row with this kind of landmark variation machine that we have. I love this exercise. You can also completely use a barbell by all means, but this is going to hit our rear delt. So same thing my elbow is not coming out completely 90 degrees from my side it is getting driven back at more of a 45 degree angle now if my elbow was tight to my side we'd be hitting more of our lat but since my elbow was winged out from my side we're going to be hitting our rear delts here my back is nice and flat again neck in line with my spine really focusing on driving up with the elbow by contracting our rear delt then after that i did these alternating bicep curls i'm not super sure of what these are called i just did two sets of 20 so i alternated by doing one normal bicep curl while the other hand was doing more of an outward bicep curl just to stimulate the bicep heads in different ways. Same concept here. I'm always rolling my shoulder blades back and down to open up my chest, help with posture, engage my core, and just stabilize my trunk to then be able to isolate my bicep muscles. Then lastly, I did a quick little core circuit. I did three sets of 20 for each. So I did a, the back extension just with my body weight to help with my lower back strength. And then I went over and did leg raises for 20 reps as well. Did both of those back to back for three full sets. Whenever I'm doing an ab exercise, I really focus on pulling my belly button back to my spine to really engage my TVA, which is that under layer of ab muscle and just engage my core, especially with leg raising motions. It's really easy to feel it in your hip flexors. So by pulling my belly button to my spine and it engages my core like none other, it's incredible. And this is kind of how I train abs throughout the week. I don't have one singular ab day, but I kind of will sprinkle them in within different workouts that I have throughout the week. you guys happy thursday today is now my second leg day of the week so i'm hitting quads and glutes again don't fully know what this session is going to consist of but we're going to roll with it as i always do yeah keep working our booty off with these booty gains you feel me Welcome to quads and glutes. How you guys doing? If you guys have watched this video all the way through up until this point, that's amazing. I appreciate you. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. So I did my normal mobility work and glute activation like I normally do. I just didn't feel a need to show it again. And we actually, for whatever reason, I honestly do not really like squatting. And I don't think it's necessary to see leg gains by any means. But for whatever reason, I felt like squatting. So she went to the squat rack, okay? So first I did some back squats. I warmed up, of course, with just the bar to help with mobility and range of motion. And so first I did one set of 10 with a 135 pounds. Again, I worked up to this weight like I did with my hip thrusts. So then after my one set of 10, I did 
two sets of eight at 155 pounds. And then I went back down for one set of 10 at 135 pounds. So four sets total. So in terms of squat form, you want to sit back as if you're trying to sit back into a chair. I initiate the movement by pushing my hips back and down. This will help to make the movement more glute focused. If you find yourself breaking at the knees firstly, that is going to imply that you are more quad dominant. Okay, so try to focus on breaking at the hips first by pushing your hips back like I'm saying. I keep a nice neutral spine. I try not to create a anterior pelvic tilt where I'm sticking my butt out and creating a curve in my lower back. Okay, I'm kind of tucking my pelvis, like I said previously, creating a posterior pelvic tilt to then shift some of that stress away from your lower back and engaging your glutes more. So I'm scooping my tailbone under. I like to keep my chest nice and open. And by coming back and down into the movement, you're going to be shifting your weight onto your heels. And you want to be coming down until your thighs are at least parallel with the ground okay if you can go even deeper with your mobility that's fantastic but again don't push it too hard you want to just honor your mobility and flexibility and then you want to drive up with your heels to bring yourself up out of that squat then i did deficit reverse lunges these came out of nowhere but they were so freaking good i did three sets of 10 here the purpose of a deficit or me standing on this block is just to help increase the range of motion and therefore the time under tension for my muscles and it's just going to increase the difficulty. The stretch that you're going to feel in this is absolutely insane. This is also great for just everything, your inner thigh, your glutes, your quads, your glute medius, okay, to engage the outer portion of your glutes for stabilization. So it's going to help with rounding out your glutes. It's phenomenal. So in terms of when it comes to any lunge form, same thing. I always like to use the cue to sink back down into the lunge. Shifting the weight onto my heel, trying to come down till my quad is about parallel with the ground to hit depth. And then I drive up through my heel and squeeze my quad and my glutes. I'm keeping my core nice and tight, my spine nice and neutral. I'm not pushing my butt out. That's going to cause some lower back stress and lower back pain. And the point of coming back and down is going to help create a nice big stretch in your glute. And I'm always trying to make movements as glute focused as possible. So I try to have it so my knee is about stacked over my heel, similar to a hip thrust, okay? To again, get a nice big stretch in my glute. And also play around with your foot placement to make sure that your foot isn't to the left or to the right of you. You want it really in line with your hip joint. Ugh, it's such a good exercise. You guys have to do it. Okay, then totally forgot about this tricep. I used to do this a lot in college as well. This is a burner. You guys are going to want to do this. It's phenomenal. The booty pump you're going to get is insane. Basically, I did a two second pause rep hip thrust. So you're going to basically it's going to consist of three exercises and we're going to do them three times. So first, like I said, a two second pause rep hip thrust. So I did a lighter weight than normal here, as you can see, considerably lighter, but I also added a band. Now, especially with the TikTok community, I've been getting so many differences of opinions of what whether to use a band in a compound movement such as this. Here is my explanation, my interpretation, my intention with using it. I understand having a band around your knee is going to limit the full range of hip extension that you can go through, okay? Meaning that you may not maximize your glute maximus production, if you will, for this movement. However, I use a band to help to engage my glute medius and minimus, those smaller muscles around my hips, by causing me to have to push my knees outward against the band and abduct my knees, all right? So yes, I might not have as great of glute maximus engagement. However, I'm doing it to help recruit my glute medius and minimus. I understand it recruits other muscles as well, but there still is engagement of those two muscles, and that's my intention with it. Especially when I'm going lighter weight like this, I will definitely throw on a band to help to target my glutes in all planes of motion here. This whole tricep, as you will see, definitely has a focus as a whole on the glute medius. Okay, so that's also why I'm adding in a band. So after you do 15 of those, pausing for about two seconds at the top of each hip thrust, you're going to go right into a sumo squat pulse, okay, for three sets of 15. These are amazing. We're going to keep a nice wide sumo stance. Our feet are just past shoulder width apart. Our toes are pointed out at about a 45 degree angle, pushing our hips back and down, shifting the weight onto our heels. We're just tapping the bench ever so slightly, and we're coming up till just before we lock out at the top. Again, this is a movement where I personally like to 
keep constant tension. I just feel like it helps to build up more metabolic stress. I have a band to help engage my glute medius. Okay, like I was saying previously, I'm constantly pushing my knees outward against the band. I'm not letting them cave in. And I'm holding a 25 pound plate at the top just to help with difficulty. The last exercise in this triset is banded lateral kicks. Again, targeting our glutes in the lateral plane, hitting that glute medius to help round out the glutes here. So I did three sets of 12. I have that same 25 pound plate on my leg as well as a heavy band around my knee. I'm really focusing on driving out with my knee by contracting my glute medius and hitting the side of my glute, okay? And to be quite honest, I feel this in both my standing leg and my working leg in my glute medius. And then for a little burnout, I did two sets of glute bridges of as many reps as possible, but pretty much both times I did about 30 of them and I had a 40 pound kettlebell on my hips. Now, I also get a lot of questions on where to position like the weight when you're doing a hip thrust or a glute bridge. I like to keep it above my pubic bone, so kind of like right on my uterus, if you will, but I kind of use my hands to help assist that weight so it's not just like super dead weight right there. I kind of lift it up a little bit with my hands so it's not so heavy pressing on my organs right there and same similar cue with my hip thrust I like to keep it so my ankles are pretty scrunched in to my bum they're pretty much underneath my knee like you can see here I find if I'm out wider it really burns my hamstrings and if I'm too close I don't feel it in my glutes same thing I'm creating a posterior pelvic tilt by scooping my hips under a little bit. I try not to roll my pelvis forward because that's going to cause a lot of tension in my lower back, like I've been saying. So I kind of tuck my pelvis under. This will help with glute engagement and minimize lower back stress. And that is it, boys. We are done ski. Whew. Okay, we're back. I feel deliriously tired, energetic, and zen if that makes sense. That was such a good workout. Came out of absolutely nowhere. It was so hard, but like perfectly challenging at the same time. I feel rejuvenated, but dead. Empowered, but defeated. But definitely recommend. Also, it's so late. It's like 8 p.m. So. That's how we do around here, boys. Also, this whole entire outfit's from Alfleet again. Shoes are from Vans. Okay, hello. It's now already Friday. You guys, this week has flown by, but I don't even, I feel like I wasn't in my body this week. <laughs> as weird as that sounds but this week was like so beyond busy for me I feel like I just was like you know like I just was on autopilot that's how I would describe it I just feel like I've been on autopilot like just flowing but I've like been doing so much I just feel like my energy and like creativity has been so scattered across so many different projects that I'm like need to center myself and ground myself but anyways happy Friday today is my really fun functional full body day I love that it's on a Friday in case you have plans on Friday so it's a quick workout my full body functional days are usually circuit style right there's more of a car cardio component do it to it. I'm using lighter weight, more body weight stuff. And it's usually for like a timed amount or I'll do like reps in a certain amount of time. This honestly has done wonders to help keep me lean. It's just like the perfect little dose of cardio that I need throughout the week just to help everything stay tight, I guess, if you will. My intention with this is to more so help with my athleticism, my agility, my speed, some footwork, some body weight strength, mobility, that sort of thing. So I'll be trying to take my body like through body weight movements, such as like when I do dive bombers and things like that. Usually Usually, more often than not, I do it in an EMOM format, which stands for every minute on the minute, meaning that you will have a certain exercise to do for each minute and a certain amount of reps to complete within that minute. And then whatever time you have left within that minute, how many times can she say minute, that'll be your rest time. Then when the next minute begins, you will begin the next exercise. And then at the end of that, then I will rest, right, for probably like one to two minutes, and then I will start another round. However, lately, the past like three, four weeks, I've been doing continuous circuits, which I really, really like. So I'll just set the timer to still go through like a minute by minute basis, but it'll be for 30 minutes straight. Okay, outfits. These, I'm feeling like baggy shorts today. So these are actually from, the brand is New Balance. I just love the color and I got these from TJ Maxx, believe it or not. Sports bra is from Alphalete. Super funky with a little smidgen of green and cheese. 
All right, baby, last workout of the week. So I always like to start off these days with some jump rope again, working on my same footwork, some different drills, just overall athleticism, getting my heart rate up. Love doing this for about like 10 to 15 minutes until whenever I feel good. And like I said previously, this workout is in EMOM fashion. However, I'm keeping a continuous timer for this workout. So here we have seven different exercises and I completed them four times through continuously. So for minute one, I did 15 dumbbell thrusters. So you're gonna come down into a squat. I'm using light weights here only eight pound dumbbells and really exploding up throughout the movement and driving those dumbbells up overhead this is a phenomenal full body movement so when you finish those 15 reps you're going to rest until the minute two begins if you're looking for a timer app i use the interval timer app so then from when minute two begins i did 35 seconds of rotating toe taps on a ball this is so insanely good for footwork and just for overall athleticism so i try to keep my eyes up throughout the whole time i try not to look at the ball if you kind of need a regression, try to just stay stationary on the ball at first and try to make contact with the ball. Then when you feel more comfortable with that, feel free to move around like I am here and try kind of different combos and things like that. Then when the third minute begins, I went into 35 seconds of kettlebell swings. So here I'm using about a moderate weight, I would say. I believe I have like about a 30 pound kettlebell. When it comes to a kettlebell swing, you again, want to make sure your back is nice and neutral. Pretend there's a board strapped to your back. The only hinge involved in this really is your hips. I push my hips backwards, shift the weight onto my heel, keep a nice slight bend in my knee to protect my knees, and then I drive up through my heels and contract my glutes to help explode up throughout the movement and drive that kettlebell forward. My hands are also just hooks for the weight. Now, the more squatty you come down into that kettlebell swing, the more glute focus it's going to be. The less squatty and the less knee bend you have, the more kind of hamstring focus this move is going to become. All right, then our fifth movement is about 12 to 15 pike push-ups, depending on how strong I'm feeling in that set. So this is more of a shoulder focused push-up. I love these. As you can see, I'm more in a teepee. So this is going to cause more of the focus onto your shoulders as opposed to your chest and your triceps. I'm really driving up through my palms is where the most of my weight is. I try to keep a nice neutral back as well. Again, a board strap to my back. Head is in line with my spine. Then moving into BOSU ball squats. I did about 20 reps here. This was great for more so balance and stability, especially within your ankles and stuff like that. So here you really need to keep your core nice and tight. I like to look straight ahead and just really try to focus on finding really good core balance and stability and try not to wobble as much as I can. This is such a good workout, you guys. I'm like, I get so excited for this day because I just feel like this we're becoming athletes. You know what I'm saying? Working on all different areas of athleticism. That's why I love it. So then after that, I went into my absolute favorite favorite ab exercise. So these are marching crunches. I did 20, so technically 10 on each side. Here you want to drive up your knee to your chest while also crunching up with your upper body. So again, I have a light dumbbell, about an eight pound dumbbell. And when I drive my knee up, I try to lift my shoulder blades off the ground and get a nice big contraction in my abs. I try to always keep my feet up off the ground. And like I said previously, I bring my belly button back to my spine to help activate my TVA, really tighten my core. And then I finished off with one lap around the track. Just for reference, nine laps around this track is one mile, but I just just try to complete it um, as quickly as I can. So it's definitely, it's not a sprint, but it's definitely a fast run. And I'm usually able to do it in like 40, 45 seconds, I wanna say. So I have a little bit of rest time before I start the next round. you guys it is now saturday morning today i'm going to go for a little hike just kind of near where i live i usually hike for about like three to four miles normally but if i'm like going for an actual hike like we're making a little day trip it will be like five to seven miles i've been feeling pretty like scatterbrained this week so i just i feel like this is exactly what i need to get like just centered and ground myself and things like that. That's also why I really like hike hiking is because it lets me like, you know, ground myself, kind of step back into my power, figure out how I'm feeling, sit with myself. I can meditate and things like that at the top. So let's go.
you guys so we are back from the hike i ended up hiking like a little bit under four miles and it was exactly like what i needed i just needed time to kind of be by myself outside in nature and it just was very grounding it was what i needed but before i close out this vlog i did just kind of want to take a second just to get real and raw this week i kind of have been struggling a little bit emotionally i've just have been very emotional i guess i've been thinking like oh this video isn't going to be as good because you know i'm not like as super as bubbly as i normally am or i haven't been like talking to the camera as much as i normally do and you know it just kind of hit me like i i mean i've said this i don't want to sound like a broken record but i just feel like it's so important and i feel really called to be very open with my emotions and i also think it's important because it helps open up the conversation and normalize feeling your emotions and not suppressing them or feeling like you have to be positive all the time or that you can't feel the feelings because it's lame or whatever i don't really know when it became cool to like not care <laughs> i totally could not disagree with that more i guess i just want to say like I love bringing that positive energy to you guys like through my videos and I hope that this doesn't like bring down the vibe of the video that's not my intention I just want to be more more than anything I want this to show realistically like how who I am and just like how my life goes just like like how I said previously this is a week of workouts for my body like I still also need to I put a lot of effort into working out my mind and that really comes into play when I'm struggling mentally so doing things like meditation journaling grounding myself being in nature working through my thoughts being aware of my thoughts really really practicing gratitude during this time for speeding myself positive affirmations trusting that everything's happening for my greatest good and just knowing that everything's working out the way it should and when it should that's all just things that like i really turn to during this time again as more so my mental practice my mental exercise so i that's when i feel the need just to be like guys i'm not feeling like myself right now but it's okay like it doesn't mean it's a bad thing life happens and ebbs and flows all the time i know i'm gonna be okay it's just a little bit of a rough patch but we need these rough patches to keep life interesting to have us actually give us the contrast to recognize when something is good when you're feeling good so yeah that's it but i really hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you guys so so much for your love lately you guys really keep me going we have such a phenomenal community on here and i'm so proud just of every just the type of people that all of you guys are that i can really tell through when you guys comment on my videos and stuff so again thank you so so much for watching i'm sending you so much love and hopefully i'll see you in the next one peace out i love you Bye.